Hello, brothers and sisters of the Imperium. I am Rakia. And what we will be doing today is learning kind of basics of Warhammer 40k. Now, I am the commander of a high fleet named the Corn High, high Fleet Corn, which is a custom high fleet that will be led by a flying hive tyrant or a trigon, a trigon prime, malanthrope. All those other fun stuff. Or even this guy can be a leader as well. So. Basically what you start out with. Well first off I should go over the tools that you should get. There's two basic tools that you should always have. Is a knife. This is actually a wood carver's knife. It's just because I like this curved blade more. Then your standard. Well, this is a small version of it, but your standard exacto knife blade. But you can always use one of these as well. I use this one. And I, I use this one. But I'll show you why I use it later. And some nippers. Now these are the Citadel ones. Me, because of my other hobby that I have. Which is building giant robots. This is probably one of the smaller ones here. The unicorn. My favorite one of all. And I'm a little bit biased towards it, yes, but it is still my favorite. So I have these snippers here from Mr. Tool. Or Mr. Hobby, Mr. Tool, that line. I have Tiananmen nippers here as well. As you can see. These guys have more of a, these are for bigger, bigger areas for now. These two are for finer areas, but the ones that I'm, gosh darn it, excuse me while I find that head quickly here. The God Hand Nippers. My goodness. They are bloody, bloody, bloody expensive. But they are so worth it. They are so sharp. Cut so cleanly. It's like the plastic melts in between those nippers. And you just feel nothing but smoothness, glory. And yes, they are called God Hands. If you have the money and you're working with really fine parts, like antennas, some, or if you're going into competition builds for the guys I showed you earlier, or these guys. You can use these as well. I've never used them on this kind of plastic, but oh my goodness, it melts through any plastic. And unlike these, these are completely snapped together. But these guys, 
You need glue. Yes. You do need glue. Glue is a must. Unless... You get these kind of guys that are... Basically pagan... Socket joint kind of deals. This, these were actually my first ones that I ever did. And because I've already... I used to watch a lot of battle reports from Tabletop Tactics, Winter SCO, Scorpion 99, Scorpion 998 I think it is, or 992, something like that. Sorry about that if I get it wrong. And I would literally just watch these for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours for a long time at a time. So eventually I decided, because I got three of these guys in the box set, 10 bucks. I figured why not. I fell in love with this. <laughs> so much so that if you're really wanting to get into this stuff, like into the tabletop game side of it as well, I would recommend getting the newest co newest rule book, which is currently eighth edition, as well as the codex for whichever army that you want. Which you can get digital or physical copy and if you really wanted to go all out you can get the tactical data cards which I have smite right on top so it has like Has stuff like this. This is a psychic power, psychic power, and yeah, yeah. You can read about that in the rule book, or else you can watch a lot of videos, as I have. <laughs> I pretty well know the rules. I just need to read the rules just to confirm the rules in my head. So. <clears throat> So, I got this guy, eight gene stealers, which is going to be these guys here, and a uh, termagon, do I want to say? I keep on forgetting. Let me just see. Trigon. Which is the Trigon, the Moloch, and the Trigon Prime. All in one kit. Which in later episodes I will go over. Or at least we will discover about them together. About magnets. I have three different sizes of magnets. So. A lot of magnets. And believe it or not, I don't even know if I have ma enough magnets. So, when you first, well,
Seeing as though we're talking about it, this is going to be a very basic episode. I won't go into too, too much detail. So you can get these kits from your local Games Workshop store. Or in my case, a different one I do have. I, I'm very lucky in that I, I live in an area that has several in my general area. So, I have a third party store. An authorized third party store. That's important. It is on the Games Workshop site. It's all official. Sorry, there's a fruit fly flying around that I do not like right now. So, you can get them from your local Warhammer, your Games Workshop, slash wherever else. You can get them online on Amazon for decent-ish prices. Although, for tools, I have to say go to the store because one tool that I will recommend, it's not needed, but I will recommend, is this mold line remover. I think it's like 60, 70 bucks online. I got it for 30 bucks in store. And this is the, even if you make airplane, even if you make any kind of plastic model at all or any model at all you have one of these you should go into your local games workshop store and get one of these they are beautiful for removing the mold lines which I will show you this in probably in the next episode this when I'll truly get into stuff And as I say, I am extremely new to the hobby. I am very, very, very new to the hobby still. I am still learning stuff all the time. I am still learning lore. I am still learning. But that's what you got to do with Warhammer is learn, 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 and learn. So this is tr the Trine Effects. Which I kind of have opened up already. But you get an instruction booklet. Important. This is one of the ones that I will be magnetizing eventually here as well. As I almost knocked you guys over again. As you can see, let me just completely move it out of the way. You get a whole bunch of these. Now, different people call these about a thousand different things. Dropping heads all over the place. But you guys can all just go live over there. So, I usually refer to these as sprues or trees. Which are the two most common ones, I have to say. But you can see that it is plastic. Now, if you've worked with plastic before, it's a little bit softer than normal plastic. It, I don't know exactly what they use for it, but it is a softer plastic. Not like this polystyrene, where if you bend it too far, it'll just snap. But, yeah, this is all polystyrene here.
Yay! Okay. And one other thing you will notice right away. It's all gray. Warhammer is a beautiful game where you can have people creating stuff like this or even probably even better than what I did here to be honest with you and basically so you will need paint Depends on what kind of paint you want. I recommend more. Let me just make sure. Acrylic. It's water water or alcohol based. So if you get it on your hands, it's not a big deal. You can get it off easily. You can get it off brushes very easily. Without having to go into white spirits and all that kind of stuff even though I do have thinners I use them for other products that I use for my other models like the panel line accent color and stuff so there's a whole ton of companies that make this stuff but one of the the easiest way to color match is through the company now Warhammer and Citadel are the same company and Citadel has a massive I mean massive lineup of paints I mean like I could try to fit all my Citadel paints on here but well let me try so I do have some of the old paints as well still like and I just picked up a ton of new paints because I unfortunately I found a store too late they were having a, a sale on them So I kind of stocked up for half price a pot of paint. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of paints. But unfortunately that store was getting rid of it all. Which is sad for me. I'm just basically taking off labels as I go here. This lead belcher. Yeah, that's lead belcher. And I'll explain one thing about Citadel paints here in a minute that I really, really like. And the reasons that I have so many is because I also have Ultramarine Terminators in the background and 
Uh, and a primaris interceptors. Interceptors on the wing spot of them. So they require kind of different colors in Tyranids. Well, that's a new color. Sorry, I got distracted kind of easily some days. I still got more. Doom old brown. Still got more. I have almost filled up my paint storage area with all of these paints. So okay. This is my whole Citadel paint collection. Right here. Now these older ones, they do not have any more. Which was Mithril Silver, Graveyard Earth, Commando Khaki Kachan Kachan Green Sorry if I Tolern Fra Flash and Desert Yellow. They no longer carry you will not find any of those paints. in any kind of games workshop store now games workshop has come up with a really neat system Where you can start out with a base paint. Like Everland Sunset. This is just an example. I just happened to grab these three as a one. Then we can go on to a layer paint. Which is, well, we probably want to do a shade. Which their shades are amazing. Just liquid gold pretty well. One of the liquid golds. Then you can go on to a layer paint. And then you can dry brush it. Necron compound. And what these are. is just basically the pigmentation with not a lot of liquid in it so I'm literally holding it upside down and shaking it a bit it's not coming out 
I can almost guarantee you that. Gotta make sure these lids close fully. And then you can go into some embellishments. Such. Well, this is for watering, thinning. There are, say, shade colors. But they do create this. Blood for the blood gods. Which is exactly what I did on the tip of his claws here. That's what that shiny red stuff is that looks like blood. Yeah. In person it does look like blood. So this is a really good color. They have a whole bunch of different ones. And for your bases, they create this special one called a texture. And what it does is you put it on and it cracks on its own once it dries. It's really neat. And they also have a handy dandy app that you can use or their YouTube channel called Warhammer TV. That's where you can actually get this skin for this guy. That's where I got it from. Does a, they do a really good job. They explain stuff well. They say always to thin your paints. But if you do not have that kind of money, I can completely understand as I say I found a sale on these or and I got half price so I kind of went a little overboard but eventually I'll probably need a lot of these paints anyway so but don't be afraid of like Vallejo or um what's another one Oh, yeah. um, ammo by MIG because all that it is is just pretty well just like these paints oh, that's not quite it that's actually pretty close it's just that this is already pre-thinned. It's in a dropper bottle. So you just put a little on a palette and there you go. A palette can be as simple as a piece of plastic. Or a water bottle cap. Or whatever you want it to be. It's just that simple. You just need a little, little bit will do you. It goes a long way. And then they also have a huge lineup of brushes, which I just have a, a couple of them. They're about some of the bigger ones. So this is for your dry brushing. It has a coarser, I think this is hog hair, so. And then they also have like really big brushes for your basing. Like this is probably what I'm going to use on the monsters creatures. They also have paint brushes for your shades, for your layers, for everything. It is really handy. Like this is a shade brush here. Let's see just how much shade that can hold. So, really good deal. They do 
put out quality stuff. But find your stuff. For me, I found Citadel to be good enough for me. Like, sure, I would love to get. There's a thing on Amazon that's like 300 bucks that I would love to get for Vallejo paints. It has a ton of paints in it. But I think I'm good for right now. <laughs> I think I'm good. I got pinks. I got all sorts of colors. And don't be afraid to mix this in with these. Or Tiananmen in with these. So I have a clear green, yellow, and red. That work that works as well. Now I do have some enamel paints. Enamel paints I find are very tricky to deal with. They don't come off your paintbrush easily, so you would have to use picked up this fairly recently as well a little thing just like this that you can put like mineral spirits in or other brush cleaners So as you can see down there, there's a grate. Just put a little bit over it. But luckily for me, so I kind of know and if you really want to keep your brush as well, from getting all splayed out and disgusting looking go to your local local art store this is like 10 15 bucks this will last for years and years and years and years and years like I've used this all of two times so yeah <clears throat> so that's a very long winded introduction into the hobby side of Warhammer 40k Sigmar any of them now they do make resin kits as well I've never put one together but for those ones you cannot use like this kind of cement this is for plastics it melts the plastics so it creates a welded bond you need super glue I have super glue but only because of magnets so And if you are doing magnets, go down to your local hobby hardware store. This is magnetic. It cost me to get like, <clears throat> I don't know, tri quadruple this amount of tin. Three bucks. So yeah, you can see there, everything. That's literally what it is. You can cut this stuff with normal scissors.
as you can see. Just a normal run of the mill scissors. You can cut it. It's pliable. You can hammer it. Just be careful. Just be careful. I did that to myself today. So, I showed you guys a few extra things that you can get. I showed you guys a few general hobby stuff. I showed you a few whole bunch of stuff. And tweezers. Never underestimate a pair of a tweezers. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. Tweezers are good. Tweezers are your friends. So. This has gone on way longer than I was expecting. So. I will leave it here. I'd like to thank everyone in the Imperium for watching. And if you are new here. And. You've liked this very long-winded introduction I know in the ne next one I'm going to actually start working on these guys like showing you guys how to clean up mold lines all that kind of stuff I've already done it on these ones so throw them off to the side what time is it no so yeah Again, don't forget to thin, thin your paints. Two thin coats of whatever you're doing. And yes, that is kind of a meme in the Warhammer universe. I'll show you other stuff that you can use. I always look around your house. Paper clips are usable. Cups are usable. Like you'll need a water container for sure. For anything. Like a pair of pliers can be helpful. A pair of tweezers. A nail polish. Nail polishing blocks are helpful. Literally, I use this when I'm standing stuff. It works great. Toothpicks. Little things that you don't really think about can be helpful. Are extremely helpful. Alright, let's just say you have alligator clips and bamboo rods lying around. Well, there you go. You have yourself a, a stand. That when you're priming something, there you go. You get every single angle just by doing this. Even the very top and all around and yeah. These work great. So before I go on rambling on and on and on again. I'd like to thank everyone in the Imperium for watching. And because this is still a very new section, let me know what you guys think. You Gundam guys out there, let me know what you guys think. Should I continue on doing this or should I do this in my spare time or while I'm waiting for panel lines to dry or what? So. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and until next time remember to rock on.